What's up guys, I'm Speedstar101 and welcome back to Firewatch. This time, instead of me playing by myself, I'm going to be playing with my wife. Hello, my name is Aubrey. We're going to start a new game because last time I played by myself, I had save already. But I actually missed a lot of things when I was playing. But um, we're going to start from the beginning into a new game. You can cut it out. Boulder, Colorado, 1975. Oh. That's a long time ago. You see Julia. Yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Did you want to read or you want me to read? I can read. <clears throat> She's about your age, late 20s, laughing with well-dressed professors and grad students. From nearby sea border, you hang her out drinking with your pals, and you approach her. You sound very muffled. I'm sorry, then you read. You are drunk. So what's your, you know, major? <laughs> you, you're pretty. <laughs> yeah. You're pretty. Yeah, we're gonna go with you're pretty. You're pretty, she says, coolly. You are not. You're a future hangover. What? You reply confused. Someone should buy you a cheeseburger, she says. She flags down a waiter, and one week later, you're Julia's boyfriend. One week. Moving quick, aren't we? We're in an elevator. Yoink. You date for over a year. She drives you absolutely nuts. It's great. Yeah. You move in. You share an apartment near the school with a view of the mountains. You two drink beers out on the deck. You drink beer just about anywhere. Life is good. Yeah. Julia wants to get a dog. There's a scruffy, undersized beagle. Julia is in love. She wants to bring it with... Uh, she wants to bring it with her to class. There's also an intimidating but gentle-eyed German Shepherd. Nothing, nothing bad could happen to Julia while she while walking this dog. It's bad. The beagle. The beagle. Mm -hmm. You pick up the beagle and name him Bucket. You adopt the shepherd, and yeah, we'll go with beagle because last time I think I went with the shepherd. Bucket's a good dog, and a week later you forgot. Uh, you've totally forgotten about the other one. Julia loves him. You love him too. 1997. You talk you talk out on the mm -hmm. deck. It's summer, 9:30 p.m., and the heat radiates off the hot uh, off the high desert. What do you think about kids? She asks. <laughs> nah. 79. What? 1979. You said 97. Oh, Frank, 1979. <laughs> Kids, you're not very, they're not very smart or good at much. I'm saying if, I'm saying if you and I could have some. A couple of little idiots. So one day, why rush? One day, why rush? Yeah, I don't want kids. It'd suck. She looks away, out towards the mountains. We have plenty of time, right? Speak for yourself, mister. Don't worry, you assure her. You tell her she has the body of an undergrad. My ovaries didn't get the memo, she says, laughing it off. One day, okay? Yeah, no, I don't want kids. One day. Okay, one day, she says. Six months later, you get uh, engaged, lying in bed on a Sunday morning. Look how beautiful this game looks. The music is kind of loud though, actually. I'm gonna turn it down a little bit. Display subtitles? Absolutely, I want subtitles. Also, give me one second. I have to change profiles for my mouse. There we go.
what does that say? Thor for Thor Thoro Fair Thoro Fair trail ahead. Do not forget to check in. No fireworks. Warning: Thor Four Trail is not recommended for inexperienced hikers. You're in their country. Bears. Learn to live with bears. Here's our map. Remember the map, babe. I'm not going to remember it. Look at this. It's so pretty. Look at the birds. Okay, you read. 1980, it's a Thursday night and Julia is four hours late. She doesn't call. You're worried and getting angrier by the minute. She walks in after you've gone to bed. She's not quite drunk, but she's clearly been having a fun time. You fight when she gets between the sheets. I'm going to say you get mad. You call her an inconsiderate... Mm -hmm. Oh, she tells you to F yourself and to not be such a baby. You call her selfish. She knows you mean it and hurts her feelings. Um. <laughs> 1981, Julia still likes to draw. She draws plants from her research. She draws all the places you go and she draws you. So you pose and flex like He-Man or you frolic like a victor. I'm going to say you pose and flex because you're a man. <laughs> you're not a victor. You, awesome. you look awesome. Yeah, I do. <laughs> Look at the sunset. Mm -hmm. Look how beautiful that looks. It's it's gorgeous. Look at this. Oh frick! Cancel. Let me. How do I? How do I take a screenshot? Um, I think it's F twelve. There we go. Two forks. Fire lookout. Eight miles. I bet you've never went on hiking before. I've hiked plenty of times. With Donnie. 1982, during the summers, you and Julia enjoy walking bucket at night. There's a festival in town. It brings in folks from faraway places. One of them tries to mug you with a knife. Bucket gets kicked. Oh, oh, oh. Julia yells. She gets flustered and has trouble speaking when she's stressed. You confront the attacker. Um, you beat his face in. Period. Okay. Yeah. Your arms get cut up, but you beat the guy to a pulp. You don't feel very tough. You cry your eyes out before the cops show up. Julia asks to take a different path from that day forward. You say okay. You don't want to go that way either. From then on, you walk by the river. Hmm. Those are different. 1984. What? No, I was what saying those saying? are those are different choices than uh, I picked from last time. I'm beating his face in. You kick my dog. I'm. It's on. <laughs> 1984 plans to have kids get waylaid by work. Julie gets offered a job at Yale. Yale is in Connecticut, 2,000 miles away. It's a great job. Associate department chair. She wants to move, but you do not. I would say agree if she commutes back and forth. I agree. Cheat on him, but I agree. You ask her if she'll commute back and forth. You don't want to move to Connecticut. She says that'll be hard, but she'll do it if you don't move. You tell her not to pass it up if that's what she wants. She agrees, and she flies back to Boulder three three times each semester. Me, personally, I would move. That Like, a job at Yale, <laughs> I would move. 1985, she's sent home from Yale on paid leave after having an episode. She lost it on a colleague for borrowing books that were important to her research. She didn't remember she had happily loaned them to him just two days prior. She was found crying in the stairwell. You say that maybe you guys should talk to someone about it. You make macaroni and well, I think you should talk to somebody. You don't forget about it. After seeing multiple doctors and having many tests, they're worried that she might have early onset dementia. She's 41. We both decide to keep it a secret for now. That's very onset. That's very. It's, it's so awful. sad. Like it, it. Like it. Just no matter how many times I either watch a video on it or read it myself, it's like it starts off so happy and amazing, and it just, of course, it just comes freaking spiraling down. Mm -hmm. So sad.
Look, we're camping. Look at the stars. <laughs> what do you call those bugs that light up, babe? Fire. I call them fireflies. What do you call them? Lightning bugs. <laughs> Lightning bugs. Oh, don't look. Don't look. Oh. It's a little inappropriate. Buck is getting older and Julia comments that it's kind of nice because he gets in less trouble around the house and a week later she goes back to the university. Nineteen eighty seven, Julia's affliction gets worse. She can't remember things in her class. Her research is in shambles. She drives her car to the next town over for no reason and has to be brought home by the police. She's devastated and she's sent home on permanent medical leave. Wow. Some days you get the Julia who calls you a, a dope and your unborn children little idiots. Other days you get a stranger. She pulls you into bed to make love. After five minutes, she goes into panic, believing her dad is at the door. You tell her family they are crushed and begin to make trips to go, sorry, to and from their home in Australia to visit her. For a while, your friends come by with little things to brighten the day, but she obviously gets worse. In 1988, you spend your days following Julia around the house. You count the seconds between the two weekly visits from Daniel, the nurse. He suggests that Julia could live somewhere else, somewhere with 24-hour care, a home. It sits with you for a couple of months. So you either decide to move into a facility or you take care of her by yourself. Um, I would say a facility. Facility? If we're being realistic, a facility. I mean, yeah, but it's like, those are, facilities are expensive, too. You make it work. They take they take Medicaid. I love how just beautiful it is. Look at this. <gasps> Look, babe, it's a deer. I see a bunch of those. <laughs> yeah, you do. You live in an area with Dear. Her family agrees with your decision. You find a fantastic place and move her there. You see her every day. Then every other day. Yep, and then you never see her because you never go over there. You go out to the bar with your old friends. It's not the same. You get the feeling that every wife tells her husband, if you ever put me in a home like Henry did, I'll cut off your roll. You slowly decide to not see your old friends that much. Yeah. 1989, Julia's sister Susan moves to Boulder to be close to her. She visits her every day. You go with her some of the time. Susan buys you an old typewriter and urges you to use use it if you don't want to see it. Ugh, I'm so sorry. If you want to see... Oh my gosh, Aubrey. If you won't see a therapist, you won't. You've always really liked Susan. I'm sorry. I just can't speak. Months go by. The dog dies. Julia doesn't remember him when you tell her. Sometimes it takes her a minute to lock in on you in the back of your mind you believe it's because you see her less and less and seeing her less and less makes her forget you more which is true so summer is coming and you see an ad in the paper for a job those are you take it you yeah take it. those are a lot um the decisions you made compared to me were a lot different and then the outcome of course too was completely different as well like in the when i got the shepherd I didn't even get a message at the end of the monologue like that, that, um, well, Mayhem, which is the shepherd, he died. I didn't get a message like that saying that Mayhem died. Mm -hmm. Um, cause mm -hmm. I think, I think in the other one, Susan ends up taking care of the dog. And then also, I oh. also chose to try to take care of, you know, Julia yeah. myself, right? And then the, the family, right? The, her, Julia's mom and dad comes to see the house and it's like in shambles and everything like that. But this time her mm -hmm. family, when we put her in the facility home, right? The family agrees with that. The family agreed with that. Yeah. And uh, Susan, which is Julia's sister, obviously is on your side on both on both uh, sides, right? Mm -hmm. But but in one situation, her whole family agrees with the situation, and then the mom and dad didn't agree with, you know, you taking care of whatever her face is mm -hmm. yourself. Yeah. Singular mine. Okay, just drop it like that. Sure. Tower, this is there. Your lights are on. 
I'm not home. No, I'm not. Can I like turn it? Okay, I got your girlfriend when she dies. Hello, two forks, come back. Pick Hello? up your radio. Two forks, two forks. I don't reply. That's gonna be a little side oh. hoe because she's gonna die. Hello, whoever this is. It's Henry, right? That's what it is. Yeah. I'm Delilah. Yeah, that's what the guy said on the phone. So what's wrong with you? Excuse me. <laughs> People take this job to get away from something. So what's wrong? What's wrong with you? That's a great idea. Go ahead. Look, I just hiked for two days, so I don't really follow whatever it is you're doing right now. You take a stab at what's wrong with me. Fine, then can I sleep forever? Sure, buddy. Okay, now go ahead. What do we want to say? Uh you killed you've killed three ex husbands. You're rebelling against your mom. Mm -mm. I'm gonna do. Nobody can stand you okay. back at home. Nobody. You're probably out here because nobody back home can stand you, which, after this brief introduction, is not a big shock. Ouch. Uh, I'll chalk that up to you being tired and grumpy. Well, I'd better get some sleep then. One sec. Now it's my turn. Okay. Good night. Bye. Let's see. I don't know anything about you. I say you got fired from your job and have finally decided to write your novel. That's the sort of bullshit reason you'll find a man out in the woods. Good night. Welcome to the job. <laughs> Firewatch.